sitting duck out there. He knows what he's doing. Nowadays, if there's a movie that's going to be released in theaters, there's a high probability that it's either a sequel, a prequel, or more commonly a superhero property. Superheroes aren't just big legends, they're big money-making franchises that in some cases cost half a billion dollars and need to make tons of money internationally, especially in the now highly lucrative Chinese markets. But in a much different time, far, far away, the mythical land of the 90s, superheroes had not completely taken over the public consciousness. In fact, superhero movies were just getting in their footing. Batman Returns was a dark and cryptic adaptation of the Cape Crusader, and The Crow was an instant cult classic. The scene seemed perfectly ready for an R-rated comic book property to be judge, jury, and executioner on the genre. In code 3613, the first degree murder, the street judge. Let me guess, life. Ah! <laughs> Starring Sylvester Stallone as the titular character, Judge Dredd, the 1995 movie, is about a dystopian lawman from the far future who patrols the streets of Mega City One, a sprawling metropolis teeming with crime and chaos. The film was a critical and commercial flop, derided for its campy tone, muddled script, and lackluster performances. While we can now appreciate it as a cult classic, the original film was anything but at the time. The story of how Judge Dredd came to be is a fascinating one, full of behind-the-scenes drama and creative clashes that offer a glimpse into the volatile world of Hollywood filmmaking. It all began in the early 1990s, when British comic book publisher Fleetway decided to license its popular 2000 AD series for a movie adaptation. Judge Dredd, created by writer John Wagner and artist Carlos Esquira in 1977, was one of the most beloved characters in the publication's stable, and seemed like a natural fit for the big screen. The project quickly attracted the attention of Hollywood producers, and in 1992, British director Danny Cannon was hired to helm the film. Cannon, then just 25 years old and fresh off his debut feature, The Young Americans, had a clear version for Judge Dredd. He wanted to make a dark, gritty action movie that stayed true to the common satirical edge and political commentary. To that end, he hired screenwriter William Wisher, who had co-written Terminator 2 Judgment Day, to pen the script. Wisher, a fan of the comics, was eager to delve into the world of Mega City One and its colorful inhabitants. But as development on the movie continued, tensions began to rise between Cannon, Wisher, and the producers. The studio, eager to capitalize on Stallone's star power, pushed for the actor to play Judge Dredd, despite Cannon's reservations. Stallone, meanwhile, had his own ideas about the character, insisting on removing Dredd's helmet and showing his face on screen. This was a major departure from the comics, where Dredd's face is never revealed, and caused consternation amongst the fans. If you think comic book fans lose their minds when writers don't follow Cannon in modern movies, you wouldn't believe what they used to get away with. I mean, Tim Burton's Batman is pretty much just him being a serial killer on poor people. The disagreements only grew worse from there. Cannon clashed with the studio over the film's tone and style, assisting on a dark R-rated approach while the producers wanted a more audience-friendly PG-13 rating. Wisher, meanwhile, struggled to balance the comic satire with the demands of big-budget Hollywood movie. The script went through multiple revisions, with input from Stallone and the studio executives, leading to the final product that was bloated, confusing, and tonally inconsistent. Despite these challenges, Judge Dredd went into production in 1994, and Stallone as the lead. The supporting cast included Diane Lane, Armin Asante, and Rob Schneider. The shoot was plagued with problems, from the oppressive heat of the Australian outback where the film was shot, to the constant clashes between Cannon and the studio. Stallone, meanwhile, reportedly became increasingly unhappy with the direction of the film, pushing for more screen time and creative control. When Judge Dredd was released in the summer of 1995, it was met with resounding thuds. Judge Dredd was a massive box office bomb, which was rare for Sylvester Stallone, who was at his career peak at that point. The film grossed just $34 million domestically, a fraction of its $90 million budget, and despite attempts to salvage the franchise with the TV series and a reboot in 2012, the legacy of Judge Dredd remains one of the missed opportunities and wasted potential. Now, that's not to say the reboot wasn't great, it actually was. In fact, I'd say the reboot is a good, competent film that does the comic books justice, but there's still something wonderfully campy about the original. It's become a bit of a cult classic, both for its like, campiness and earnest creative world-building. The acting may be ridiculous, and I mean, Rob Schneider isn't really remembered for anything much these days outside of being an anti-vax lunatic. Rob Schneider is a Wall Street executive with everything going for him. Only problem is, he's about to become a carrot. But if you've never enjoyed it before, brace yourself for the man who is most certainly the law. Judge Spy, little man. Me? 
A spy? <laughs> this guy. That's funny. No, no, no. I, I, I live here. I mean, I'm gonna live here. If, if I live. <laughs> Maybe I should go to a hotel. No way, man. Don't you hear him out there? It's Black War, man. <laughs> So, tell me, seven summary executions, were they necessary? Unavoidable, sir. What is the meaning of life? It ends. <laughs> Class dismissed. I don't believe it. You're gonna tow me? Towing is for a first offense. This is your fourth violation, Barbara. You are a menace. How do you plead? Not guilty. I knew you'd say that. Hey, wait a second. What are you doing? Grenade. Grenade. And what was the result of the computer check of the DNA coding on those bullets? The DNA is a perfect match for Judge Joseph Dredd. It's a lie! The evidence has been falsified. It's impossible. I never broke the law! I am the law! <laughs> Red, maybe the law doesn't make mistakes, but I'm free, and you're toast. <laughs> Actually, you're toast. I forgot to mention it. Your new friends. They're cannibals. Right. Have you been crying? It was like a running gag. You know, this is working. I'm gonna grab him by the face in every scene. So he grabs me by my face and rips me out and throws me up against the wall. And that's his way of saying hello. The most difficult part is he has to stay in those particular clothes for four months. Can you believe it? You have just sealed your fate. No. You have just sealed yours. Hey, Dredd, I thought it was you. That's right. You know, you should congratulate me right now, because I'm about to be a daddy. And you're being very, very rude. You don't know what you're doing. Well, the next batch of genius judges are not going to be the puppets that you want. They're going to be my brothers and sisters. Why did you judge me? You killed innocent people. The means to an end. You started a massacre. I caused a revolution. You betrayed the law. Law. What's the matter with you? charge of being human when we could have been gods guilty the sentence is death don't miss total rounds exhausted no say no
700 feet. 400 feet. Take caution in this sector. There is a citizen riot in progress. Have a nice day. Oh, this is...